Welcome to Obsidian. Time to manage our initiative track of parties with database folder. All right, so today we're going to be having a look at database folder and initiative tracker, and specifically how we can use database folder to maintain a list of players that are part of our party. Uh, specifically, we want to use database folder to look at you know not just the folders, but also you know the details that initiative tracker is using, and allow us to update all of the details that are feeding into that place from one single location. All right, so for anyone who's been using Initiative Tracker for a while now, if you're anything like me, you probably put their details in once at the start, um, when you start first started using the plugin, and chances are some of those things are now out of date. All right, and this is the problem with player sheets, like where a DM keeps a, a copy of the player sheet, for example. Um, you know, they quickly become out of date. The same thing applies with Initiative Tracker. I've got to admit, that's one thing I really like about Initiative Tracker is it keeps the required detail to the bare minimum. I mean, really all you're looking for out of here, out of here is um, the name of the person, uh, what level they are, uh, what their um, HP is, what their AC is, what their modifier is. And look, that's largely it. That's all the tool really requires. Um, but you know, I'll be the first to admit my notes get out of date very quickly. Um, I don't even have complete data here. So like Garbok, for example, I am missing data. Um, so being able to maintain this information from a single table is really cool. And so what I have here is a new add new player. Uh, it's a database folder note. All right. So I can click into here and it just quickly returns a list of all the active players based on the filtering that I've set in this folder. Um, and just for your awareness, I do have a filter on here. So role equals player. Here's some metadata I have in the front matter of all of these notes. And then what this table does is it pulls in the metadata from all of these notes and displays it actively here. So what uh, what am I talking about? Like I have Ritstar here, right? He's got 31 HP. And if you look over here on the right, we can see he's got 31 HP. But check this out. Ritstar just leveled up. He now yells out he's got 41 HP. Well, we now have 41 HP. AC can now go to 20. All right, and you can see that then updates as well. So, you know, the fact that this is live syncing from database folder into the notes and back to initiative tracker, I, I that's, that's pretty handy for me. And I think that's gonna be a really useful feature for maintaining this data in a really healthy way. Now, don't forget as well that we also have the ability to maintain other data elements in here using these lovely drop downs that we can predefine with different options. So you can have lists of all the race options and the class options or whatever in here. Um, Javelin's been uh, kind enough to mention as well that, you know, Initiative Tracker can do the same thing with monsters. So if you wanted to go down the path of using database folder to create some sort of table that maintains uh, all the details of your monsters, then um, the uh, initiative tracker is capable of bringing that data in as well. So that'd be a much bigger project I'd imagine, depending on how deep you want to go down that rabbit hole, but it is a possibility. So anyway, what are we talking about? How do we set this up? So you're going to need a couple of things. So data view, all right, you're going to have to have that installed. Um, database folder, you're going to have to have that installed. Um, go back and watch my last video if you haven't seen it on um, database folder. We'll go through the whole process on how to install that and how to set this up. Um, obviously, initiative tracker. Um, I you know, assume you've got that installed at this time. Uh, if you've got initiative tracker, then chances are you have dice roller as well. Uh, you probably even have TTRPG stat block installed. So this is you know utilizing a large number of things at this point but it's cool, so you know, why not do it? Um, but for the nuts and bolts of it, right? So let's say I wanna add a new player, all right? Why, why would I wanna set all this up? So I've got a new player, his name is Josh. He's joined our party. Um, Josh is uh, gonna be playing a character named Bob. All right, um, Bob's now come up here. Bob is the dungeon master. All right, and just so I can set him up properly, I'll go over here, I have a role, he's a player, and I have a note icon there for him as well. And just what that does is just make sure that I can actually see him. You can see the icons changed um, for this player. Um, and yeah, just feeds through, so I just like it. So uh, what level is he? Well, he's a level 20 because he hacks, he's got 200 HP, and his AC is 500. 
good luck to them. He goes with a plus 20 modifier. All right. Um, what class is he? Well, he's a sorcerer, of course. Um, he's a dungeon master. And that's about it. All right, so now we have that set up. If I go and uh, have a look at Josh's note, all right, we'll have a look here. You can see that this data has automatically updated and fed through into that note. All right, and then if I come here to settings, go down to initiative tracker and come in here, all right, we can now come through here and we can see we do have Bob. Um, that's one I created previously, but if I go plus add player, link to note, I'm looking at, it's actually a note called Josh. That's under my player name, not my character name. All right, so Josh, I'm going to rename him to Bob. It's bringing the level, hit point, armor class, initiative modder, all automatically straight from that note. All right, so he's now there. So now what I can do is I can now come down into my parties. Okay, um, I'm just going to create a new party for the sake of this. Um, YouTube party. And I just wanted to call this out as well because I think this is pretty cool. Um, I have another video on supercharged links. And for anyone who's watched that, you'll notice that supercharged links allow me to do this cool little thing where I have an icon for, you know, my, my player characters. And what that is is I have a, um, I think it's a note icon field. Um, inside of each of those uh, notes and when that is set to player then it replaces the, um, the text, it makes the, the, the text green and adds a little wizard picture at the front. So I think that's pretty cool. But just thinking outside the box, what you could potentially do with this now is actually use different icons for different parties. So what I'm talking about is here I have a really long list of players. Um, I have about three different games worth of people in here that play at my table. Um, and so what I could potentially do is actually have different icons for different people. So that when you come in here, for example, the people who have like the wizard hat, they're obviously in my adult party, but I could have a completely separate icon here for my kids party. And that way when I'm going through and just like quickly picking out who belongs in this party, I don't even need to read them now. I'm just like looking for the people with that have the wizard icon. All right, so just a heads up on like how I think that could be usable. All right, so now we've got a YouTube party. We've added people into it. Um, we can now come back to our uh, add new player board and we just have a look here and we can see, all right, so we've got Josh. He's the dungeon master. Oh, we got his level wrong. He's actually level 15, well, level one. And he doesn't have that much health. He's actually only got 25 health, right? And then over here, when I want to change to that party, I can use the switch party, go to YouTube channel. All right, there we are. Oh, I forgot to actually add the dungeon master into this party, so we should probably do that. So I'll just go back here quickly and go, where is... Interesting enough, this is not actually pulling through. I wonder if that's because I need to refresh this one, probably. All right, so let's just go to the kids and then back to YouTube party. Yeah, Bob's not pulling. And I, I suspect what's happening here is that the, uh, the plugin's probably querying this before it gets started. So what I would do here is just reload or um, turn Obsidian off and on again, effectively, and we'll reload all that data. Um, but yeah, obviously I've got full ability now to, to come in here and, and use this table to maintain a list of all of my party members. Um, and what I can do now is every time I level up, I can just bring this page up and say, all right, uh, Ritstar, like, tell me, mate, like, you got to level four, what's your HP at? What's your AC at? What's your modifier at? Toads, all right, walk me through your data. Um, which means it's a lot quicker to do it from a table than this to swap from one page to the next and to the next and to the next. So, yeah, super simple. The fact that that works and the, the, the plugins sort of work and talk to each other, I think is a really powerful functionality or feature. So um, again, hats off to Javelin, the man's a god, right? Like he's just making Obsidian into the TTRPG campaign manager of 2022, like, well done, mate. Um, but yeah, great functionality. So there you go. Um, we'll put this out as a quick video just so you guys are aware of this functionality and hopefully it works for you. Anyway, that's it guys. Um, I'll speak to you guys on the forums.